as international mediators try to negotiate the release of more hostages. The Israeli military has agreed to extend a temporary ceasefire in Gaza for a seventh day. Wednesday, 12 Israelis and four Thai hostages held by Hamas arrived back in Israel. In exchange for the hostages released yesterday, 30 Palestinian women and teenage boys have been freed from Israeli jails. Also, 17 Thai hostages freed earlier this week are back in Bangkok. But very sadly, Israeli officials say two gunmen reportedly opened fire at a bus stop at the entrance to Jerusalem during the morning rush hour and shot three people dead. The ambulance service says at least six people were injured, some of them critically. The attack was allegedly carried out by two brothers from East Jerusalem who are affiliated with Hamas and were previously incarcerated in Israeli prison. The gunmen arrived at the scene in a vehicle armed with M16 and a pistol to carry out the dastardly act, but they were killed shortly after by two soldiers and a civilian. Israel's Minister of National Security, Itama ben who was at the scene of the shooting described the morning as a difficult one for all Israelis. He extended his condolences to the families of the bereaved and wished the wounded quick recovery. Israel's Minister of National Security says his position regarding the ceasefire is clear. Israel must not allow Hamas speak with two voices. Meanwhile, Israel's president, Isaac Herzog, is expected to attend COP28 in Dubai, where he will hold talks with diplomats on the release of hostages held by Hamas. I understand that due to the... During the UN climate talks, which will also be attended by the Palestinian president, Mahmoud Abbas, the Israeli presidency says, Mr. Herzog will hold a series of meetings on the importance of releasing the hostages held by Hamas. <laughs> Hamas attacks against Israel on the 7th of October killed 1,200 people with about 240 others taken hostage. Since then, Gaza's Hamas-run health ministry says more than 14,500 people have been killed in Israel's retaliatory campaign, including 6,000 children. And for more on the war situation and also the extension of the pause and fighting, I've been joined by Zoom from Belfast, the executive director of Emma's Boston Center for Peace, Darren Q., Good to have you join us on the world now. What are the chances of a further extension of uh, the truce beyond a day, you know, considering the fact that many other leaders are calling for a ceasefire? Thank you for having me. Yeah, I, I think that uh, some extension of the ceasefire is looking more and more difficult, especially when we're hearing more calls within the Israeli government for continuing the offensive as soon as possible. Um, the National Security Minister has said as much. There are others in the Netanyahu government that are inclined to do that in that direction. The other problem for Israel is that the longer that the ceasefire continues, the more it gains time for Hamas military forces to re-embed themselves in other parts of Gaza. So the military um, timing is certainly working against any sort of extension of the ceasefire. On the other hand, of course, um, with U.S. Secretary of State Blinken in Israel at the moment and asking for an extension of the ceasefire. So long as he remains in Israel for another day or two, uh, then it's going to be harder for the Israelis to reopen that offensive. And the Americans are certainly pushing for an extension of that ceasefire, and they're coming very heavily down on the Israeli government. And so Israel is certainly feeling that pressure. But I think that the military objectives of Israel are going to outweigh uh, the, the heat that they're feeling from the international community at this point, and that we are likely to see some resumption fairly soon of the conflict. 
All right, Professor Q, um, we could relate the situation to the war between uh, Russia and Ukraine in the sense that Ukraine seems to be the worst hit as with Gaza. What is the hope for uh, Palestinians in the middle of this? Well, I think that, you know, certainly we're seeing that the Palestinian public is, is bearing the brunt of the suffering in this and that the longer that this goes on, the optics for Israel are going to get worse and worse. The New York Times just today had polling data, for instance, in the United States showing that although uh, support for Israel remains strong, uh, support for the Palestinians are, are, is increasing. And I think that the more that we see pictures of suffering Palestinians in the media, this is going to only increase pressure on Israel to, uh, to stop its offensives. Um, on the other hand, from Hamas's perspective, all Hamas has to do is survive to come out of this uh, with some sort of victory, I think, in terms of how it's viewing its own interests in this. Certainly Hamas is looking uh, stronger uh, to some extent um, in, in Palestinian circles uh, in terms of being able to get the release of various Palestinian prisoners uh, in the, rec the, rec the recent swapping of prisoners that have happened. Um, so on the Israeli side, I think the big question is going to be um, how much control of Gaza will Israel settle for? At what point will it stop with its offensive? Um, and I think that's the big question going forward, and a lot's going to depend upon the success of those operations. All right, Professor. And um, with, uh, on the strength of both parties, we know that uh, both Israel and Hamas are resolving to return to fighting until the end. Doesn't this sound like horror once again to civilians in that region? Absolutely. I think civilians are the big losers in this, as they are in, in every war. And, uh, and as I said earlier, I mean, I think that's really going to be the metric that's going to decide how far this war is going to go. It's clear that Israel has tried its best to at least give some advance warning to civilians in areas that it was planning to attack. But Hamas uh, clearly has its military positions well embedded in heavily civilian areas. And there's no way that Israel is going to be able to continue with this offensive without killing more civilians. And as we've seen uh, in the media, um, women and children especially have been the ones that have suffered uh, in these attacks. And that's only going to look worse as, as we move forward. Uh, Israel is still moving through heavily populated areas. Gaza is the, the most heavily populated strip on the planet. Uh, there's nothing, uh, there, are no, uh, there are no alternatives here for the Israelis that do not include heavy civilian casualties. Mm. Well, Israel and the Hamas groups have uh, accused each other of uh, violating some of the agreements they made uh, during the, the truce agreement. Uh, what does this say about the credibility of both parties? This is standard in most ceasefire and truce agreements. There are always infractions. There are always claims back and forth of one or the other uh, having done something wrong. Uh, I think what's more uh, striking is the fact that it even went forward and that we've seen the number of hostages get back and forth uh, as safely as we have. I, I for one, uh, was more pessimistic about the ability of the ceasefire to hold as long as it did. And so I've been happy to see that it has extended uh, as far as it has. And I am hopeful that American diplomacy will be able to get that extended longer. Uh, but although, as I said earlier, I don't think that's going to last for, for, for very long. Um, you know, and I think we have to also notice the, the important role that Qatar has played in mediating um, this, these circumstances. And that mediation is continuing. And I do think that governments like Nigeria and others in the region uh, that have interest on both sides of this conflict uh, can continue to put some diplomatic support uh, behind the Qataris, uh, behind the Americans and others in trying to push this peace process forward. All right, that was uh, Professor Darren Q, Executive Director of UMass uh, Boston Center for Peace. Thank you for joining us on The Wolf Now. Thank you for having me.